Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of BeginnersC++.com's continuing tutorial series. My name is Damien and I've uh, taken the time to uh, go ahead and create a new project called CPP Tutorial 2 and a new file called Tutorial 2 uh, prior to starting recording. So we can hop right into things. In this video we're going to be talking about perhaps the most essential parts of C++. And those are going to be, uh, well, number one, we're going to talk about uh, the order of operations, which is a math concept. And number two, we're going to talk about using the debugger. And both of those are critically important for you to learn. So without any further ado, we're going to put in our pound sign and type in include IO stream. And we're going to type in using namespace std. We're going to get into what that means uh, probably in the next video or two. Then we're going to say int main, open close uh, paren, and then have our bracket down there. So I'm just going to copy that and get it out of our way. Put that down there and do a return zero at the end. This is going to be our uh, our basic sort of skeleton for every program we're doing for the first considerable amount of time, by the way. So if you want to make that into its own template, there's a, a way you can do that, I believe, under uh, tools and then it's... um. Yeah, I think it's tools, and then no, I, I forget. It's been a while since I've done it. I'll I'll post it in the the description of this on YouTube, or uh, in the uh, source file, one or the other. But anyways, so without any further ado, um, with mathematics we have a uh, a sort of set of operations and. Uh, based on what you're doing, it decides the, the outcome of what you're adding. Here's an example. Say we have 9 plus 9 times 9. Now, if you do this left to right, you have 18 times by 9, which is going to equal um, 180 minus 18 is uh, 162. Or, I'll turn, or wait, I'm sorry. That was, yeah, no, that's right. Okay. Or alternatively, you have uh, 9 times 9, which is equal to 81, plus 9, which is equal to 90. So the question is, which one is it? And that's what the order of operations handles. Declares the following. And in normal mathematics, the rule is PEMDAS, which means you solve in this order, parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, slash division, and addition, slash subtraction. Now where the slashes are, that means that they're handled with the same priority. So in the above example, this one right here is correct. Now if we were to change that around and we wanted uh, 9 plus 9 to be added first, what we would do is we would slap parentheses around it like this. And that's going to equal the uh, the 162 from above. So to show you an example where that's going to sort of come in handy with programming, let's declare two variables, or let's do three variables. Let's say int a equals uh, 0, b equals 0, c equals 0, right? Now we'll have the user input for each of these, and we're going to say input a value for a we're going to do cin for a, 
And then all we're really going to do is copy paste this. Um, what I will do is add a uh, new line here as well, or well, two new lines there as well. And so I'm just going to grab all this. I'm going to copy paste. I'll move my cursor out of your way. It's a really bad habit of mine. Um, okay, so we're going to have a new value for A and then B. You'll notice that I changed where it said B here as well as B right there. And then I'm going to do the same for C. And I probably could have just pasted it without doing that. But that's okay. So, alright. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take... Uh, we're going to say A plus B multiplied by C. So in this case we're going to just do it like this. We're going to do C out. We're going to slap some parentheses around these so it knows to do that all at once. And what this is going to do is despite the fact that I put parentheses around it that's not going to change the order of operations because there's nothing outside the parentheses acting on it. So in this case, let's give this a run and look at what happens. Our output window was huge for some reason, not being looking quite how it should. Okay, so I'm going to say that uh, A is 1, B is 3, and C is 5. Now, with what I've explained to you above, we're still observing this type of rule. However, something that you should notice is, uh, before I actually do this, is that there is, um, in C++, there is no exponents. There is, but not yet. Um, and it's not, and it's treated as multiplication when you do use them. So don't worry too much about that. When you do get into using them, it's going to be with parentheses anyways. So we have that A times, or A plus B times C. So with, uh, with 1 as A and 2 as B, uh, or I mean, and 3 as B and 5 as C, that means we're going to have 15 plus 1 for 16. With, oh, and apparently I was on Best Buy earlier. Good to know. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to hit enter here. And you'll see that 16 did come up as expected. So again, what that did was it took the 5 and 3 and combine them first, despite the fact that A and B were together there. Because the rule is it follows the order of operations and if there's two operations with the same priority it goes from left to right. So that was pretty easy. Now, let's assume that I wanted to try that same thing again. Now, I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to add another new line character or two. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to intentionally make a mistake. And I'm going to check my time. Perfect. Okay, so let's say that I try to, uh, to use a variable that doesn't exist. So let's say I try to do a plus b multiplied by d. And I mean, as you can see, there's, there's no such thing as D. Now, first things first, you're going to notice immediately that it underlines the D. It's going to tell me something along the lines of an uh, invalid symbol uh, over here, or can, unable to resolve identifier D. But let's say I go ahead and I, I run this anyways. So I give it a run, and you're going to see right here uh, that we get some, some very stern warnings from our compiler. Now, the first thing it's telling us is that there's no new line at the end of file. That's not an actual problem. Uh, that's specific just to this. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, you can fix it just by hitting enter once at the end of your file. Now, what this is doing is it's telling us what's the matter with our program. And you'll see where it says D is undeclared. And what that means is that we never specified what uh, D does. Um, we never declared it up here. So that's that problem. If we get rid of D, the program will compile correctly. 
But let's say we make a, a more unnoticeable problem. Let's say instead of C out with the less than signs, I do it with greater than signs. If we give that a run, we're going to notice it says no match for operator greater than greater than and STD C out. And so if we click on the, um, if I just move that up there and I click right here, it will move our cursor to the line where the error is and it will highlight the line and it will show us exactly what's going on. So again, that's another very important thing to know. You know, when you click on this sort of error, sometimes it will take you to exactly where you made the error. You'll see here that the way that it's telling us where we made the error is by saying tutorial2.cpp in function int main, which means that we are inside of the main function, which starts here and ends down here. And it's then telling us that tutorial cpp or tutorial-2.cpp uh, then a colon and 30. What that colon 30 means is on line number 30. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap it up here just by showing you those two very simple errors. Oh, actually, you know what? I will show you one more. Let's say that I have uh, my less thans back in place and I just leave out a semicolon at the end of the line. If I give this a run, what it's going to tell me is a little bit different it's going to tell me that it's expecting a semicolon before return. Now, there's another time when that happens as well. Say we put another C out here and we say hello. If we compile this doing the same thing, it's going to tell us um, expected semicolon before C out. So if we click this, it actually brings us to the line that the C out uh, is on because the C out is actually the error here. You can leave this open if you want, um, and maybe continue it on another line. I think that's poor practice personally, but when you click on line 32, it brings you here, and so you always look at the line above. And in this case, that line's blank, so we look at the line above that. All right, so this has been another quick little instructional on uh, how to program in C++. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the order of operations or anything of that nature, please let me know. Hopefully uh, you guys have been enjoying this so far. It's something that I thought I would come up with. Um, if you have any suggestions or anything that you want to learn, please inform me and I'll be more than happy to oblige you. Alright, have a nice night everyone.